morning, beloved. How good it is for us to be able to assemble in the house of the Lord one more time and to lift up praises to his holy name. To those of you who are part of the live stream congregation, we welcome you. And of course, I'm always happy to see those persons who are actually in the sanctuary. Won't you please stand this time as we shall sing our spiritual preparation selection. We have come into- To be in the service one more time, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Our call to worship, I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Because of the house of the Lord, our God, I will seek thy good. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. Lord, I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. and sing praises we shall. Our hymn of praise this morning is, I once was lost in sin. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. And then a little light from heaven filled my soul. He bathed my heart in love and wrote my name above. And just a little talk with Jesus made me whole. Now let us... Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just a little talk with Jesus, Lord, with you makes it right. Oh, Heavenly Father, oh God, here we are, Lord, just to have a little talk with you, and we know that it is already all right. We have come here today to worship you, Lord, and to magnify your name, Lord, because only you are worthy and deserving. So, Father, I just thank you for allowing us to gather on this day, a day that we have never seen before and that we shall never see again. Oh, God, we just love you so much with our whole heart. So we ask that you allow your spirit, Lord, to fall fresh in your house, Lord. Oh, God, I ask that you anoint every person under the sound of my breath, and even those who are viewing the live stream, Father. Oh, God, we just come today to magnify your magnificent name we come to lift you up we come to put whatever has been on our mind aside because today and always and every day it is all about you so lord god i just ask that you touch us all in a mighty and miraculous way lord god i ask that you have your way we surrender this service unto you father and we pray lord that you get the glory out of everything that is said and done. And then, Lord God, we say just to have a little talk with you, Lord. So, Father, I know that your saints have been in your face, Father, and I pray that you have given them everything that they need and that you have answered their prayers, Lord. But we know that your will shall be done. So, Father, we just come to lift you up. We come to praise your holy name, Lord. So, Father continue to be here with us on this day we thank you we praise you we honor you lord and we lift you up lord and it is the name above any and all names jesus christ we thank you and praise you this is our prayer amen the house of the Lord. Please stand for the scripture. Remain, remain standing for the Gloria Patri. The scripture this morning is taken from Matthew 16 verses 13 through 20. 
We'll be reading from the New King James Version. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Bar Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he commanded his disciples that they should tell no one that he was Jesus the Christ. Remain. I feel better. So much better since I laid my burdens down. Let the people of God say amen. amen. If we have any visitors worshiping with us this morning, won't you please stand, give us your name and where you're from. If everybody seems to be at home, then stand to your feet. Let's join in singing one stanza of what a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on everlasting arms. Let me make a few announcements at this time. First of all, you recognize that there are five Sundays in this month, and so that is the reason that we could postpone our steward and trustee board meetings a week later. But the stewards will meet this coming Tuesday at 6 p.m. by Zoom. The trustees will meet this coming Wednesday at 6 p.m. by Zoom. And then our official board meeting will be on Saturday at 10 a.m. Uh, this afternoon, the homegoing service for Anthony Thornton will take place. The family hour at 2 p.m. and the service will start at 3. That's at the Burns Seventh-day Adventist Church located on the corner of Warren and Cadillac. Take heed and govern yourselves accordingly. Uh, we are grateful to God because of a generous anonymous gift that was given to the church We've been able to add some mics and some new lights. They're trying these lights. Uh, it looks good. I just got to make sure I have a little light here because I can't see that well. But I pray that we will make it through this service on today. But we want to thank God for the new equipment, for the communication ministry, for these lights. They were installed professionally for the new mics and all of those working with the communication ministry. We have a team upstairs, you have a team down here, and we're saying thanks be to God. But let us pause for a moment now, for we can give thanks, yes, for the man-made lights, but we have to also give thanks to the one who provides us light every day. And that's when the sun rises over the eastern slopes of the mountain every morning, and we can witness a day that we've never seen before. Eternal God, our Father, we pause now and ask thy blessings upon the new equipment that has been made possible and is being used by the communication ministry. Uh, thank you for the anonymous gift that was given to this church that made many of these things possible. And we pray, eternal God, that the trustees will understand their fiduciary responsibility 
and overseeing all of the physical things of the church. And we're grateful for these fine people who have been supportive, who've been kind, and who have been generous. Please now, Lord, bless the mics, bless all the equipment, and bless these new lights. It's in the name of the Father, the Son, and the blessed Holy Spirit that we pray that the people of God say amen. Now, beloved, we are getting ready to go to the annual conference next month. Uh, and you recognize we have our obligations. So all I'm going to say is do the very best that you can for those of you who are here and those of you who are listening. The lights and everything we have, that's beautiful, but we have to meet our obligations at the annual conference. And I know that you're going to do what you've always done and we are going to have a 100% report. Let the people of God say amen. amen. All right, you sound a little better than that now. Sound optimistic. Come on, say amen. amen. All right, that's better. We have some birthdays in the month of July. I have some names, and there might be other persons whose names I do not have, but we want you to stand. Pat Reason, I guess she's celebrating her birthday. She's not here. I knew when I didn't see a handkerchief over there, and thank God I brought one myself. I knew that Pat Reason must not have been out there because she'd have made sure. Her birthday was July the 10th. Gianna McCrimmon, July the 13th. All right. Uh, then there's Gar Patrice McCrennan the second, July the 18th. Reverend Wilson, who's away on today, July 19th. Donna Armour, July the 24th. Stand up. Amen. And this is also the birth date of my good friend and classmate, Dr. Joe Samuel Ratliff in Houston, Texas. Cato Reed, July the 29th. And Brother Ronald Spurlock, who's not here, July the 31st. Is there anyone else who's present today who has had or will have a birthday? All right, let me see. Okay, just give the name and what's the birth date? All right, the 25th. God bless you. Yes, sir, my brother? All right. All right, thank you. Okay. I can't, oh, I couldn't see you, baby. I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am, Ms. Adams? July 11th. All right, come on, church. Let's, did we get you? Yes. July 31st. July 31st. Okay, now you all make sure the office gets the reports and the names so that we, I missed somebody over here. All right. Yes, ma'am. What you say? Whole oh, lot of babies born in July. All right, remain standing. Come on, congregation, stand to your feet. Let's sing happy birthday to them. Lord, Lord bless you. On behalf of the officers and members of the church, we want to say happy birthday to you and may the good Lord bless you. I have a couple of wedding anniversaries and if there are others, you may stand, but Michael and Geneva Barnett I didn't see her here today. Uh, that's on July the 18th. That was their 30th anniversary. And then George and Sandra Hall, tomorrow, July 25th, be their 52nd anniversary. All right. All right. Sister Brooks, I see you standing. Yes, ma'am. July 31st. Amen. Amen. Brother Brooks is upstairs working the communication lab, but we want to say happy anniversary. Now, did I miss a preacher this time? Did I, anybody got married? In, all right, all right. We want to say happy anniversary to you, and it's wonderful when you can still be in love and you want to share 
your joy with the joy of others. So happy anniversary, and we hope that as the years go by, they will be sweeter and sweeter and sweeter. To God be the glory. I believe now, I've tried to make notes that I've covered everything that I'm supposed to cover at this time. Let us proceed now to take up our tithes and offerings. Good morning, church. It's now time to return to God a portion of what he has so graciously given unto us. It's offering time. The ushers will proceed to receive your offering if you have not already placed it in the basket out in the narthex or given by way of the telecommunication lines, and there are so many ways to do that. But the many ways to give are on the screen, and we thank you for your gifts and your offering. Please stand. All things come of thee, O oh Lord. me not, O gentle Savior, hear my humble cry, while on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry, while on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Won't you stand to your feet? Let us join in singing our sermonic hymn, Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior.
I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. Thou withdraw thyself from me, or whither shall I go? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. The God of a Mary, the God of a Martha, the God of a Rosa Parks, God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thou who has brought us thus far along the way. Stand by me, master. Watch over me, servant. Speak through me, holy one. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, for truly thou art my strength and my redeemer. In the master's name I pray. Let the people of God say amen. Beloved, when you start reading the New Testament, uh, you will find that the first book you will start reading will be the book of Matthew. Uh, because Matthew is the first book that we run into in the New Testament, there are those who believe that Matthew was the first gospel written. Uh, that is not the case at all. It's the gospel of Mark that was the first gospel written around 50 or 55 AD during the same period that many of the Pauline epistles were written. But when the canonization process took place, when they were compiling the books of the Bible, the reason that Matthew was placed first because it provides a smooth transition from the Old Testament to the New. Today we want to journey to the 16th chapter of Matthew, and I want to reread the 13th through the 16th verse, and these verses will serve as the launching pad for our homiletical flight on today. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, Some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? I want to preach this morning from the subject, Do you? Do you? Brother by the name of Russell Wendell Simmons. He was born in the Hollis neighborhood of New York, the Queen's section on October the 4th, 1957. When this brother by the name of Russell Simmons 
heard Eddie Cheba perform in Harlem in 1977, Simmons knew that hip hop would be his career. Simmons stated hearing Cheba in 77 made me feel like I had just witnessed the invention of the wheel. Well, the same Russell Simmons wrote one of the books, which was a best-selling book, and the title of that book was Do You. He states in the book that he had to be a hip-hop artist because he felt in his heart it was a thing for him to do. He talked about being a volunteer when trying to get a particular job, but he talks about the necessity of being legitimate and not being a hypocrite or phony. He said it in the book that you have to know your setting and sometimes you have to even change what you want to do and have the right appearance if you want to get the business that you desire. He's known for wearing his hip hop clothes, those expensive gym shoes and jeans, his cap, have an earring in one ear, but that's Russell Simmons. But he also stated that there were times when he was working on a major corporate deal, he had to put on a dark suit, a white shirt and a tie to go to that meeting. I'm afraid today that there are too many persons living their lives for everybody else but themselves. No two persons have the same fingerprints, even if they are identical twins. And believe it or not, the fingers on your hands do not all have the same fingerprints. They're unique prints for each finger. Well, my brothers and sisters, just as we have different fingerprints, God has not made all of us the same. We have some unique traits, unique qualities, and unique gifts, and I want to preach today on do you and not somebody else. Well, years ago, there was William Edgar Burkhardt Dubois who talked about the talented 10. He was concerned with the elite persons, those persons who could study the French, those persons who could study the calculus and trigonometry and study the Latin and all of your original foreign languages. Then there was one by the name of Booker T. Washington, who was a contemporary with Dubois, but Booker T. believed that you were to lay down your buckets where you were and that you had to take the situation you were in and do the best. It was Booker T who went on to start Tuskegee College, that is now Tuskegee University. He could not worry about the talented 10 or Dubois or what other folks were saying. He had to be himself. He had to do you. Benjamin Elijah Mays wanted Martin Luther King Jr. to become the president after him of Morehouse College. But Martin Luther King Jr. recognized that he had a different calling that came from an almighty God, and he had to be himself, do you. Miles Davis, the great jazz trumpeter, father was a dentist, mother was an educator, a librarian. The father wanted him to be a dentist, mother wanted him to go on to college and be an educator, but Miles just wanted to play that trumpet. He could only do that which he felt inside of him he was called to do, he had to do you. I am so proud of Magic Johnson, one of my favorite basketball players, Hall of Famer, businessman extraordinaire, broke into the NBA with the Los Angeles Lakers as a rookie when the center got ill. It was Magic Johnson that played center and we recognized that they won the championship. And of course, he has a son and he wanted his son to be a star like him, but his son has an alternative lifestyle. And it was Magic Johnson's wife that he affectionately calls Cookie that had to get Magic Johnson to understand that his son can only be himself. Do you? The other day, 40,000 people came and gathered in the stadium to see Elton John. 
Elton John, some of you will call a freak. Some of you will talk about him. But he has been himself as long as he has been an entertainer. And while you're talking about him, make sure you're talking about the millions of dollars that he has given to charities, the millions of dollars that he's given to Africa to help poor black kids who are starving and who are ill. Elton John could not worry about what folks said. He had to be himself. I'm saying to you this morning, stop trying to make your children be what you want and work on them being the best that God will have them to be. Let's go to our text. Jesus is winding down his ministry. He wanted to spend as much time with his disciples as he could to guide and to instruct them. We find now that he has gone there into the region of Caesarea Philippi. Caesarea Philippi was 25 miles northeast of the Sea of Galilee. It was outside the domain of Herod Antipas, the ruler of Galilee. It was in the area of Philip, the Tetrarch. And the population there in Caesarea Philippi was basically non-Jewish. Jesus wanted to know if the disciples really knew who he was and what his ministry was all about. Caesarea Philippi, had some interesting religious dynamics in its region. There were scattered temples of the ancient Baal worship. There was a great hill, and in that hill there was a cave, and it was believed that this cave was the birth, birthplace of the god Pan, who was believed to be the god of nature. There was a great temple of white marble built to the godhead of Caesar, and it had been built by Alexander the Great. Jesus wanted to know what people were saying about him and what did they think. The response from the disciples were that some say you are John the Baptist who has come back. Others say that you are Elijah because Elijah was considered to be the prince of the prophetic line. Some say that you are Jeremiah. It was believed before the Babylonian exile that Jeremiah took the ark and the altar of incense out of the temple and hid them in a cave in Mount Nebo. And before the Messiah would come, Jeremiah was believed to bring the ark and altar of incense back. And then they say, but some say you might be one of the other prophets. Jesus says, forget the crowd. Do you, what do you say? Who do you say that I am? Peter said, well, thou art the Christ, son of the living God. And another one of the translations, it says that flesh and blood did not reveal that to you, but such as my father's in heaven. And upon your confession of faith, Peter, I will build my church, and the very gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now then, if Jesus wanted the disciples to be themselves and to do you. What does that say to you and to you and to you and to all of us today? Are you supposed to live your life trying to be like somebody else or what somebody else think you ought to be? Or are you going to be the best person that God will allow you to be and do you? First thing you got to understand here is all of us, we got to know Jesus for ourselves. Do you not my mama, not my daddy, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's not what my daddy testifies about. It's not what my mama testifies about. But I must know the Lord for myself. I must have my own personal relationship with the Lord. Do you? We cannot have any secondhand knowledge of Jesus. You got to have firsthand information. If you were to go into the courtroom and a lawyer were to ask you a question and you said, well, I was told, they say, oh no, that's hearsay. I want to know what do you know as a fact for yourself. Well, my brothers and sisters, many of us have been coming to church a long time, but you've been everybody but yourself. 
it's time for you to do you. Some of us come to church, we want to act like somebody else, we want to dress like somebody else, but the Lord wants you to just be yourself. Secondly, my brothers and sisters, you must not allow yourself to be swayed by the crowd. The other day, Ice-T was on TV and you know, he stars in Law and Order all the time, but this was a talk show. And Ice-T was on there with an old buddy of his. They had grown up together. Ice-T had been a rapper. Ice-T really had been a thug. He had been a gangster. And he said on this TV show that I just got tired. I was fed up. I was through. I did not want that lifestyle of being a robber a gang banger and going around and just causing trouble and I said that's it. His good friend that was on the show with him he said well Ice-T told me that but I told Ice-T I just wanted one more score and so this friend decided that he would organize a robbery of a jewelry store. He did not go into the jewelry store but he provided the weapons for the robbery. During the robbery a person was killed and here was ice T friend who received life in prison, but he was in prison for a total of 26 years. And he talked about seeing ice T being successful and moving up in his career. But it was at that time he had to realize how big of a fool he had been. But the point I'm making now is that ice T had reached the stage in his life that he had to do you. Suppose he had decided that he would do one more robbery with his friend. He too would have ended up in prison. But because Ice-T had reached a level in his maturational process that he had to be himself, not what the gangbangers were doing, not what the crowd was doing, but he had to follow his own conscience, his own mind, and he had to do you. You better wake up today. Too many of us are still being led by the crowd, buying things we cannot afford, living where we cannot afford because we want to be like the Joneses and somebody else. You better do you. When I finished college, getting ready to go to seminary, a number of my friends who had gone into the ministry, they called me a fool. You already have your fool on a nation. Why do you want to go to seminary? But I knew that I needed more education and Fred Stevens, my father in the ministry, and insisted that I would go. And so I couldn't listen to the crowd. I had to be me. I get down to Atlanta, Georgia, and there, while being there, I was playing in the Atlanta Emory Symphony. I had classmates who would see me with my drumsticks, catching the bus, going over to Emory University to play in a concert, and they would say, oh, look at that little African going to beat his drums. He's nothing but a fool. I didn't listen to them. I went on and played anyhow and enjoyed what I was doing because I had to do me and I had to do you. Well, my brothers and sisters, I want you to know today, finally, that God wants you to be you so he can work with you and empower you to maximize the utilization of your unique abilities and gifts. Martin was a prophet and a preacher. He could not be an educator, administrator, like Benjamin Mays wanted here to do you. Miles Davis had to play that trumpet. And we must understand today, thanks be to God that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ had to do what God sent him to do. He had to do you and not be swayed by the crowd. We must understand that Jesus, he was not a military general, but the prince of peace. He was not the new ruler of Israel, but the king of kings. He was not a political star, but he was the bright and morning star. He was not the biggest flower in the garden, but he was the rose of Sharon. He was not a silver engineer, but he was the bridge over troubled waters. He was not to be served by man, but he was to be the savior of humanity. Jesus came not to be a running buddy, but he came to be a true friend. 
Oh, what a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit, and oh, what needless pain we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrow share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden? Comfort with the load of care. Precious Savior, still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends despise for safety? Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms, he'll take and shield thee. Thou wilt find a solace there. Blessed Savior, thou hast promised that will all our burdens bear. May we ever, Lord, be bringing all to thee in earnest prayer. Soon in glory bright and clouded, there'll be no need for prayer. Rapture praise and his worship will be our sweet portion there. Take it to the Lord, our Savior and our friend, the one who came and cries unto us right now, do you, don't try to be like anybody else, but the way God wants you to be. Stand to your feet, Father. Let's just sing that, what a friend we have in Jesus for invitation at this time. If there's one today who's not in the church, or maybe you never accepted the Lord as your savior, it's time for you to come now and to join the church as we just sing a couple of stanzas of this hymn. Him who's able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Father, be glory and majesty dominion and power, both now and forevermore.